we have some really good Kickstarters today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First, I'm, you're going to take us into the 80s. Yeah, I'm taking full 80s. With two, we're, go we're doing two and two today. Yeah. Mixing, mixing things up instead of, going, instead of alternating. <laughs> so, the Warriors Turf War. Yes, if you, haven't get, if you don't recognize the writing, this is actually a famous movie. You've seen it? I have seen it. Yeah. And you have not seen it? I have it? not seen it. Okay. But so, I know the premise of it, like, uh, a lot, of, like, almost know everything. Okay. So, but in essence, you play as the different gangs in this, the Warriors, and the Rogues, I think the Furies. The Baseball and, and Dudes. The, yeah, I think that, that's the Furies. <laughs> baseball Furies, yeah. And the other one's, like, a girl's, like, the, I forget this stuff. I'm, I'm not going to remember. It doesn't matter. It starts with an L. But you the choose, ladies. <laughs> uh, you get a box and you get a whole bunch of miniatures for each one, and it's pretty much a turf war. But you're gonna it, the way it works is pretty much you're gonna like see, see the first two battles, like one's in a graveyard, one's in I forget the other example they had, and then you'll choose which guys to send where, and of course the police could show up okay. too. So it's a really a big resource management while con knowing how to gain control, which I think sounds really cool, especially with what the movie was based around. And it's like a miniatures. Game, yeah, no, the, each uh, yeah. each gang has like detailed interests of their actual movie counterparts and I think cool. the groups are uh, like the muscle the artist I think the regular gang member and the warlord who obviously is the leader mm -hmm. and like certain things can only equip to certain ones like the warlord can get really strong stuff but only he can do it because he's the warlord right, right so it's this really cool based on you know for based on a movie this really cool idea and just nice to see in movies I feel like we're starting to get all these board games on movies and like the weird thing is, usually when I hear movie remakes, I'm like, oh, please don't. But this stuff, it's like, yeah, this is cool. Why is that? I think, well, part of it is because the Warriors, you know, came out 30 years ago. So it's not, you know it's not just a cash grab. They're like, oh, you know, uh, what? I can't think of a single movie that's coming out. The Accountant <laughs> board game, just because they would never make a game based on that movie. Just because it's coming out this week, we got to get it out. So it feels like more of a labor of love. Like these people actually really want to make this game, even though it's a, still a successful franchise. They're probably gonna, it's gonna make money. But and I think that's part. Yeah, of it. and I'm thinking maybe. I mean, tell me your pin on it. Another reason is it's not like we're taking these characters and replacing them with actors. It's still looking like the people you know, like for Big Trouble in Little China, it's still trying to capture the actual people who were there, like the, how you know them. And they're not trying to make it different to fit today's audiences. You're not like, they didn't have cell phones in their day or something. <laughs> Though this will be very curious now how Jumanji comes out with all this. <laughs> I can't wait for the new Jumanji board game. That would be. Are they only making a video game supposedly or something? I don't know. I haven't heard anything about That's that. That's what I thought I heard. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that goes for eighty dollars. Comes with a whole bunch of miniatures. Won't be the most expensive game in today's <laughs> uh, Kickstarter section. And then uh, st we're staying in the eighties for for this one. Laser Riders. <laughs> That's laser with a Z. Yeah, I love this one. If you can't tell, the game is actually held in like v VHS tapes. But that already I love. And the way the, the idea is like you're all four laser riders, like the sheriff, laser shark, cosmic surfer, like totally 80s art style that worked. And you have to like gather these four prisms to open a gateway first before anyone else. The board is a table, just like playing like Star Trek or uh, Star Wars Armada or something. Right. And you have you put down track pieces of where you're moving, and you can up your throttle or down, just like in um, Formula D. <laughs> uh -huh. But you leave your track there. And like Tron, okay. if you run into someone else's track, you blow up all and right. you start all over. All right. So this really fun, just making crazy tracks, all like colored and eighty style. Like it's to me, it just sounds like the perfect like gift for anyone who's like who's obsessed with that era. That sounds awesome. Cause, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I love any even like the really crappy flash versions of the Tron video games where you do that stuff. So a board game idea that sounds like like a no brainer. Like how did it take them this long to? Yeah, no, that? and it's and it's it's great. It's hilarious. You, you move the pog. And just I just feel like it'd be one of those things you're just playing to reminisce while you're doing. Just like no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, unlike I feel. Formula D, when we played it, I felt like one time I was just like, well, I'm forced to slow down. Like, I didn't even have a choice. Like, my other, it didn't matter what I did all before. I just. You're at a turn. You got to do it. Yeah. But this, it feels like actually your decisions and your opponent's decisions will matter if you crash. It's not just, well, I'm slow. It's, it's you, like. 
Yeah. Oh, my opponent actually tricked me into wrapping around or something, you right. know. Do you know, is it actually player elimination or do you have multiple? No, you go back. You have to restart. Oh, okay. so, so no, you're not, so it's not like, well, I'm out. You get to go back in, you just have to restart and person's head on maybe getting prisms or something. That's a plus. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a big thing, especially in this kind of game because that way it still has that casual spirit when running around without too much freaking out about you're going to go sit out now in the corner and cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I'll do anyway. And there is, I believe if you back now, a fifth, because this is the same people who made, um, I think the, uh, the oh, I'm totally blanking, Sandals of Multiverse. You get like one of, the char one of those characters as one of the... Uh, Writers. All right, all right. <laughs> I wonder if he comes with his own VHS too, because I really love it. But. Laser Riders. That is only twenty nine bucks. Yeah, that and one. that's the other thing. That's. Yeah. I think that's a great price. Yeah, let's check that one out. It's full throttle fun. All right, now let's move a little bit forward in the future. Yes, this is well. This is an evergreen topic: conspiracy mm -hmm. theories and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, intrigue and betrayal. Conspire is the name of this game. It comes from our friends Cherry Picked at Cherry Picked Games, and it's a storytelling game. Yes. When we did their RPG, Catalyst, Catalyst, you were all about conspiracies. <laughs> now they're doing a game called Conspiracy. I don't think it's coincidence. I don't think so either. I think we're directly affecting the path <laughs> here. Uh, so this is a super. Uh, loose games, loose game in terms of really the structure and the rules, much more towards the RPG side than the game side, but not quite an RPG the way Catalyst was. Basically, you invent most of the game. You make up the setting, the timeline, the premise, and then as a group, everyone decides which characters should exist in this game, depending on which tier you back. It actually comes with uh, dry erase mats for you to write down your character names, and the, each character has three goals. And then you shuffle them all up, some of those goals are secret, and hand them out to everybody. So you know who's in the game, but you don't know who's who. And you're allowed, if you want, when you start the game, to just say who you are, or you can keep it a secret. And basically, you're just trying to get your, convince everyone to go along with your agenda. And the thing where the, where the actual gameplay part comes in, aside from just discussions and negotiation, which is most of it, is everybody has three tokens. And... If you use one of these tokens, you make a statement about the world, and it's true <laughs> instantly. Uh, it's the only you can't do anything like if somebody says uh, c cars don't exist, you can't say yes they do. You can't negate someone else's, and you also can't say oh that guy's dead now. You can't s stop anyone else's from doing something. You can't hurt their agency, as, as they put it. But other than that, so basically it be it will become an insane world, depending on what group you're playing in, certainly with oh. ours. Because oh my god, I'm just imagining <laughs> certain people in our group. Oh god. And if you watch on their Kickstarter page, their Oof. example video is something to do with dinosaurs and the Fountain of Youth, and there's all these insane things going this on. This sounds terrifying. I just want you to imagine some of the people in our group, like my brother. <laughs> That's too much power to some people. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty insane. And basically you play until the end of a scene, which is uh, people can like kind of vote on to whether the scene should end or not. And you could keep going, you could keep playing until everyone gets their goals or doesn't. Uh, super free form, but that, just that aspect of it with the, <laughs> uh, you know, being able to change the world instantly is really crazy. And the hit and roll part appeals to me. Uh, it's called Conspire. You can get just the PDF for $15. $40 gets you the dry erase mats. And then there's a higher 65 also gets you the little uh, specialized tokens. Otherwise, you can use anything. You can use dice or coins or what have you. We've loved their stuff, so definitely check it out. Yes. We, uh, Catalyst had, a, had great atmosphere and storytelling stuff. This seems to be somewhat in that vein, but much more of a party, loose, fun style that you could easily introduce to a group who didn't play RPGs. So then play it with drinks. <laughs> yeah, easily, <laughs> easily play with their game drink, too. Uh, finally, uh, much more on the hardcore end of things, Deep Madness. This is a game. It's mm -hmm. somewhat love. It's a game. It's yes. a game. Somewhat mm -hmm. Lovecraftian in theme, but with more of a sci-fi bent to it. You're exploring this underwater, deep underwater mining facility, and as you're doing so, people are losing their mind, and evil, horrifying monsters are appearing and attacking you. And it's uh, uh, basically pretty similar to a style of game to something like Mansions of Madness. You know, you have different characters. It's fully cooperative. 
you're walking around the board, uh, you can find items, weapons, you're rolling dice to attack monsters, that kind of thing. It's all, uh, the map is tile-based and it's generated differently depending on the scenario. Uh, the few things that I thought made it really interesting and unique that make it stand out. Number one, the tiles can flip and their other side is the evil horror side and that's where monsters can come from and will make that a bad place to go. <laughs> I, no, I really like okay. that. Like, I can think of some cool. Th it sort of reminds me of Stranger Things. Like, imagine if you could like go. To <laughs> yeah, it is kind of like that. Um, number two, the turn or way the turn order works. It actually alternates between player, monster, player, monster. Each specific monster has their own card, so it's not just all the good guys, all the bad guys. So you, it's you know changes the way you're thinking of who wants to go when. And the other thing is, you are in an underwater mine. At certain times, rooms may flood. And each person actually has a drowning dial. <laughs> and if you're in a room and you're trying to do something, there's a chance you could run out of oxygen and die. I'm sorry, all I can imagine that is just Mario 64. The <laughs> <laughs> or the, the dreaded Sonic on Genesis noise when the drowning music starts. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's no, the that game. that sounds really cool. And you and I definitely have always been loved the, act the idea of whenever someone's trapped somewhere, like especially with mysteries or things like this, like mm -hmm. whether it's on simple as a train or in space or in water, because it sort of sets some boundaries. You don't I think, well, I'll just walk outside. Actually, well, it reminded me a lot of the game Soma, too. No, that definitely, <laughs> like, when you first sat on the water, I'm like, and then we run into a crazy robot. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, which maybe, and then, you know, it's tons of miniatures, really, like, like really cool designs. It goes, it goes for $100. Uh, but they've already hit a bunch of their stretch goals, and I think if you if you like miniatures games and you like that style of horror game, this will definitely be. No, I mean, this game. sounds right up my alley. I love the idea. I always love modular boards, but not only the fact that the board grows or something, but the fact it flips to change. Yeah. It's I think cool. it's a really interesting, and, and that's not even including drowning aspects, so the room has almost like five different states. Yeah. <laughs> so even if you've seen the room, like, uh, let's take a look at a betrayal. The room could change the next time you go into it. Yeah, it keeps keeps things fresh, variety. Look for that in all other Kickstarters. Just the right amount of Lovecraft. Yeah, we don't. It's not like <laughs> it's not Cthulhu, but it's the things. it's the spirit of Lovecraft, which is, I do think is a, which is nice to see more of because usually it's just literally like we usually joke the Cthulhu stickers just on there. It's right, right. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely. Like yeah, that exactly. The theme more so than the literal. Like, a, probably a better than Cthulhu game than a lot of Cthulhu games <laughs> without having him in there.